We are currently in Canada and are taking a moment in order to send you a video so that we might keep in contact with you. We're doing this on the fly so you may wish to not use headphones because we noticed some technical difficulties there. Of course we're always trying to move ahead and improve our recording situation. Today let us consider the last gospel and the word was made flesh. These words are not normally considered because when this is read in the principal gospel on Christmas our thoughts are on the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ as they ought to be. But we should consider this and the word was made flesh. God gave his word to Adam and Eve that he would send a redeemer and God always keeps his word. And he fulfilled his word by sending the word, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now Jesus could have come and simply said, You are saved. Your sins are forgiven you. But no. He wanted to show how important it is to keep your word in the most dramatic way he could. He suffered the death on the cross to keep his word and save our souls. And this gives us an example how we ought to keep our word. And do we stop and think about that? When we are asked to do something, we give an answer. And if we say we will do it, we are giving our word that we will do it. This is what it's known as. And this is in small things. And we should ask ourselves before we give our word, is it possible? Can I do this? Then once we determine we can, then we should ask, ought I do this or ought I not to do it? And if I should do it, then and only then should I give my word. And then I should solemnly see to it that I keep my word. We should all do this because the world depends upon us to keep our word. Because the person we have given our word to may give their word to someone else based upon our promise to them. And yes, our word is a promise. Now we should keep our word not just when it's easy, but when it becomes more difficult. And this even in small things. Because we have already given our word. True, there may be occasions when it's difficult. But unless it becomes impossible, we should not cut ourselves slack. We should go ahead and keep our word, even if it costs us a sacrifice. Because this will prepare us for keeping our word in larger things which will often have sacrifice involved in them. There are two solemn places where most of us will give our word in one or the other. The first of these, many will give their word in marriage. To live with another until death do them part, through thick and through thin, in easy times and in difficult. And then there are religious vows, where a religious offers his life to God through the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, which also can be quite difficult. But if we've prepared ourselves by keeping our word and thicken and thin and even small things, when the large things come along, we will have no difficulty in keeping our word because it has become a habit. And so when we give our word, let us remember the words of the last gospel. And the word was made flesh. Medicure omnipotentis, patris et fili, et spiritus sanctus, shenet super vos et mani et semper. Amen.